Hi guys, I'm Ruggiero from One Foot in the Door here and I've got a very different video for you today, okay? And I've also got a big announcement that I will do at the end of the video, okay? So today's video is different in the sense that it's not a, a great moment of acting uh, type of video, although it is similar. This video was requested by Ty Ramirez. Thank you very much, Ty, who also gave a generous donation to the channel. So thank you for that. Uh, so what Thayer asked me to do is to review uh, if a movie that he did that he was cast in and to give him some feedback, okay? So that is what I'm going to do today, okay? I'm going to, we're going to look at parts of uh, this short movie and I'm going to just give my, uh, my feedback on this. So some bits I'll point out things that I liked that I think were very well done from an acting point of view. And I will also point out things that I think could have been done differently. This is not a judgment on Thayer's uh, acting, obviously, and nor on the movie overall. It's just my own opinion. And I think it's something that you might find interesting uh, because it is a lot about finding ways in which certain scenes might have played out differently. Okay, so having ideas in that sense. Now, one thing I need to say right away is that it's very difficult to give this type of feedback because I don't know what the director wanted. So I don't know if I'm giving feedback on something that was specifically what the director asked Thayer to do, and in which case obviously Thayer did not have a choice. He had to follow what the director wanted, and guys, always keep that in mind. You have to do what the director wants. So this is why I'm saying it's not a judgment on his acting. I'm just looking at what I see and just see what other possibilities we had, okay? So the movie is called Faces and the director, writing director is Carl Johan. So uh, I'm going to put the link down below if you want to see it. There are spoilers for this, okay? So this is a nice short movie, uh, very, I would call it surrealistic. Uh, it's very Lynchian, reminds me of David Lynch a lot. And it is very much open to interpretation, I think, in terms of to what happened exactly. We get a general feel for it. Um, because it is so open to interpretation, it is the kind of descending to madness type of movie. Um, several things, several, several images are quite strong and they are meant, I think, to be confusing, metaphorical, not clear cut. Okay. So anyway, let's start from the beginning. nice blankness there that you know uh, what happens after you've had an accident where you're not quite really can't quite believe that it happened and you you had this rush of adrenaline and now you're sort of coming down and that I think was very nicely done Very nice, again, uh, I believe it, fully believe it, and yeah, that's uh, that's nice, that rush of intense emotions and just uh, not knowing how to cope with this. Hey, stop, stop, hey, all right, hey, stop, what are you doing? Give me that. We don't need help. She's fine. She's okay. She just needs some rest. This is all really unfortunate. Really unfortunate, but we're all soaked up in it. Soaked up in it now, so you're okay. Things happen. Things happen. Okay. So what do we do? 
we just cope with it. All right, you're okay, relax, relax. Okay, you're fine, you're fine, it's okay. Okay, so here is a bit that I I think could have been done differently. Again, it's not a judgment. If this is what the director wanted, then absolutely fine. Um, I felt he went for the kill a bit too quickly, especially in the light of what we see afterwards. Um, we what we learn in the rest of the movie, or at least what we, what I think we learn in the rest of the movie. As I said, it's it's very much open to interpretation. But what I think we see later on is that this is not a serial killer, this is not someone who has killed before, this is, you know, it's a normal kid. A normal kid in a bad situation. While I can totally believe that someone would eventually get to doing something that horrible to try and get out of trouble, the fact that it's so quick really jars with me. Uh, we go from that nice reaction when he's there checking the woman to suddenly he sees this guy calling and it's fine, okay, that's a very quick reaction to say, no, no, we don't need to call anybody, she's fine, she's fine. But then after that, the decision to kill, that's a huge step. That is a massively big step. The fact that he basically skips it. It feels like he just goes straight for it without even questioning, without even thinking about it, like it's an obvious thing to do. To me, that's jarring. Again, it might be what the director wanted. It might be that it's purposefully done like that to make us maybe question why this person would do something that horrible. But the rest of the movie is about at least what I interpret it to be, is guilt eventually catching up with him and complete mental breakdown and desperation because of what he did. So I would have liked more thought about, about that decision. Uh, I find it interesting how he lies down with the guy, he feels like he's trying to comfort him. Maybe if we had more of that, maybe if we had one moment after he throws the, the phone away, for example, when he thinks about it and he realizes that he has to do it. Uh, you know, something more. I think something more would have also helped us connect with this person more, because in the very first section, we do. You know, poor guy, he's, he had an accident, it wasn't his fault, and now he's desperate. He's faced with this horrible, life-changing event and he makes the wrong choice. We could and should, I think, sympathize with him, connect with him, but we don't. And I think we don't because we don't see that moment. We don't, we skip that one extremely important decision that he makes. Because it's so fast and he goes straight for the kill, it's both slightly unbelievable and just, I don't know, we just, witness it happen, but at that point, any kind of real sympathy I could have had for the character kind of just goes away. And I also find myself not really believing the story anymore because who the hell just goes to kill someone that quickly unless they've done it before. If we discovered later on that he had done this before, it would be different. But it's not. The whole point of this, I think, again, my own opinion, the whole point uh, is that he never did this before, is, you know, he is now breaking down because of that decision. So I'm kind of missing the decision, the weight of that decision. But again, it might be what the director wanted. It might be that it is he wanted this kind of detachment from the character. I don't know. I think acting-wise, that could have been a very interesting moment where we could have had not just one decision, but in a way a whole series of ups and downs and hesitations and things. And he said it was played so quickly that we miss 
all of that. And I, I feel like it's a missed opportunity a little bit, but again, it's up to the director what you want. Um, okay, let's skip ahead a little bit. Uh, actually, let's watch one more bit here and then we'll skip ahead. wanted to be like you, boy with normal parents, wouldn't destroy everything just by showing up. Nice despair there, uh, that kind of empty release after having killed and uh, juxtaposed with the being sick now. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so uh, I think there is a nice use here of uh, obviously the editing which gives us many different stages of his mental state juxtaposed with one another and I think Ty did a good job not only portraying each single one of these but also the longer moments when we hear conversation uh, I think it works well in contrast with them. Uh, let's look. stuck on the road and I don't think I can make it back to the city tonight so I was thinking if I could use the cabin for the night. Guess what we haven't heard from you in a long time. How long has it been? A year? Yeah look does it really matter now? Can, can, can you just help me? Can you just let me sleep one night in the cabin please? Of course my boy. I'm just really surprised. I'm sorry. Is something wrong? Yeah, as I said, very nicely juxtaposed, just a position there of uh, the scream, the, the arguing with himself, and this trying to ask for help. I, I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was well done. Again, we're going to skip ahead now a bit more, I'm, and this is going to be the last bit we looked at, okay? This is. He goes to the cabin and he basically goes insane, okay? Here you guys are, telling me to travel the fucking world. What if I don't fucking want to, huh? Now you want to be quiet. Hey. Hey. Okay, so I find that talking to the bear very, very interesting. It's an interesting choice. Um, and again, there is, I think, a tiny bit of a missed opportunity here. Uh, again, my own opinion. The rest of the movie happens in the cabin and it seems slowly going, going crazy. Um, what I miss is a bit more variety in the emotional state, as in he's always kind of like that, you know, angry, sad, very low. Um, obviously, he gets more intense sometimes, but the talking to the bear could have been a chance to see some something almost funny. If he is going insane and if he's breaking down, you know, what? why not have him actually joke with the bear instead of, again, the same type of ran rancorous emotion that we see him play with the, uh, with, the, with the photos and the rest. I just feel like it would have been a nice little contrast to have, because, you know, it's, it's one of those things like, uh, like depression, for example, when someone is depressed, they're not 
always down. They have massive mood swings. So this could be the same thing. If he is going insane, then he wouldn't just go down. He would have ups and downs. And that would have made it a bit more, a bit more interesting, very simply. Uh, so that's a little something that I would have liked to see different, basically. Because the rest, I think he plays, he plays very well. And, and it is nice, it's believable within the context. Obviously, it is a surrealist movie. Um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting. What I'd like to see, maybe a bit of humor, maybe a bit of something else, not just depressed, depressed, depressed. So that would be my, my feedback on this. I, I think, I hope you find this useful. I hope you guys find this useful as well. Announcement time. So, you guys might have noticed that I stopped posting on a Thursday and I'm only doing one video per week, okay? And I will keep doing that for the whole of October. The reason is that we are currently in pre-production for the mini-series Hashtag Honesty, which is co-produced by Time Productions and Apropos Production. It's a series which I co-wrote with Neil Bishop, who is also playing one of the lead characters, and I will be directing. So we are now gearing up to start shooting, and we'll be shooting all throughout October, okay? So I am extremely excited about this. The series will premiere next year on uh, Time Productions' YouTube channel, okay? So keep an eye out for that. It's a very funny uh, dramedy series, so it has some serious moments as well. And it's about this ruthless PR manager, social media manager, who organizes for the fiancé of one of her clients to leave him at the altar via an Instagram post, only to then realize that she's made a horrible mistake and she needs to get them back together. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of fun. And there are a lot of BTS uh, which will be shooting and posting uh, on all channels of social media. So Facebook, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and here on YouTube as well. I'm posting links down below both for my social media and uh, Time Productions as well. So if you're interested in any of this, please follow us. And also, I am now thinking of setting up a Patreon uh, following Thayer's recommendation, so thank you very much. And I am very much open to doing more of these kind of videos, so if you guys want me to review or give feedback on any pieces of acting, you know, whether it's an actual movie or even just a self-tape or whatever, and I'm open to doing them both privately and uh, publicly as we've done with this one, okay? So, Thank you so much, guys. I will see you next Monday, okay, with another video. And until then, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.